Hey everyone, welcome to another how to web flow. In this video, I'm going to explain positioning, CSS positioning as best I can. All right. It is one of those CSS properties that is confusing when you first get into web design, especially for graph designers. Now, my my uh, tip for graph designers is to let go of the canvas size. Let go of it, okay? It's it's something hard. I totally understand. It's something hard because you're used to dimensions of is this a business card or is it a billboard? Is 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 it a legal paper? Is it a letter paper? No, let go of all of that. When it comes to positioning, everything is relative to its parent or its container, okay? So for example, the canvas or the body of your web page, the width of it is relative to the browser window. The browser window is relative to the device. And so when you put in an element into the body, th the position and the width and the height and, and all that stuff is relative to whatever the width is of the body with, and whatever the width is of the window and whatever the width is of the device. That makes sense? Okay, so with that being said, we're gonna focus on CSS positioning, which is static, relative, absolute, fixed, and sticky in this video. All right, let's get to it. All right, so I've made a couple of containers here and all it is is just it has a h1 it has a box that's width 500 a height 250 inside of a container right nothing special and i've labeled them because this is all the positions that we're going to learn all right so position static simplest one Static just means default. It just goes on the page. It's static. It one goes after the other. All right. So nothing really to learn about static. It's just when you place an element on the page, like say, for example, an image, I drag it in. Look at that. It's static. Everything I put on the page will be static by default. Cool. Done. All right. Relative. All right. So relative means in, re in relation to where it is originally, okay? So let me put two div blocks, all right? And let me color this one, uh, let me color this one yellow. Oh wait, no, let's get a complementary color. Oh, Peru, all right? And so this one right here, I'm going to make it position relative. So I'm gonna give it a combo class relative position relative as you notice it does nothing however if i push it using the positioning here say pushing it towards the right or to the towards the left notice how nothing happens to any other element container 4 doesn't move this doesn't move even if i move it up and down Nothing else moves except for that one element that has relative, right? And the reason why is because its real position, which is that one spot right there. So if I remove this and remove this, this is its original position. So all the other elements still think that that element is in that one, is in this position. But if I move it, it's actually moving to a different position and it holds that original position as well. So that's relative. So this is relative to itself, okay? And so another question you might be asking is, why does it overlap? So whenever you use position relative, absolute, or fixed, then things start to overlap. Okay, and since nothing else has position relative in this box, th this is the only one that is floating, okay? What if I add position relative to this? 
Okay, so this orange, what if I set this to relative? Now, look at this. This is overlaying on top of that. So why is this happening? How do you know which order it goes? So a web browser always reads from top to bottom. Now, graphic designers, I know that you're you're probably used to things like uh, Photoshop or uh, Illustrator where the topmost layer is on the top of your layers panel. Well, web browsers think differently. They read from top to bottom. And so anything that's lower is actually on top. I know, weird, but you just gotta think like a computer. I, I read line by line, this one, and then I'm gonna stack this one on top. And think of these as, Pieces of paper, you give me the body, so I'm gonna put that on the table. You give me this one, I'm gonna put that on the table and it stacks up on top of each other. So now this one is lower than this, okay? So that's how they stack up on top of each other. However, if you wanna change this for any reason, you wanna change the stacking order, for example, this one, you can use Z index. So all elements start at zero. That's what auto is. All elements start at zero. If I want this one to be above this, I can just set this to Z index one. Okay. Now, how high can you go at Z index? You can go nine, 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 if you want. If you want that to be the most top layer. All right. So, but if I remove this, there you go. Now it's back to zero and zero, but because how the computer reads, this is on top. If I remove relative, it's now static, and this one is on top. That's relative. All right, moving on. Absolute. What does absolute mean? Well, let's try it out. If I set this to absolute, position absolute, look what happens. Wait, what just happened? <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> Did I add two? Why is this? What's going on? Oh, okay. This one's position fixed. <laughs> Let me delete those two because it's confusing me. There we go. So we're on absolute. Okay. So what just happened? <laughs> uh, let me remove this and explain. Okay. So... First, let's talk about this uh, container right here, okay? This container has a height of auto, meaning if I delete this, or if I cut it, Command X, if I cut it out, then that container shrinks because it only has this. It shrinks to the height of whatever its contents is. If I put back the div block, now this container grows. If I set this to position absolute, notice that the container is now small again because when you set position absolute, you're telling the parent element, hey, you know what? This one's now floating. Pretend it doesn't even exist. Just let it float in whatever space it wants, all right? So now that it's floating, I can move it anywhere I want. Okay, so for example, if I set this to zero, if I set this to zero, zero at the top, you might be wondering, where did it go? So it's actually up here. All right, and let's change this color. So it's all the way up here. And the reason why it's up here, rather than inside of its container, which is it supposed to be here, is because when you set something to position absolute, it's like a child who's lost in the mall looking for its relative, okay? So if it can't find its relative, it'll immediately go to the body tag. So the body tag is the is the last spot for element to go if it has position absolute, okay? So if it doesn't have any relative, it goes to the body. It, it 
connects itself to the body. But if I go to this container number four and give this a position of, oops, relevant, <laughs> relative. If I give this a position of relative, now look what happened. It's stuck to the top left of this container. If I go back to this div block and I look right here, it says relative to con container four. So what it means is, hey, I'm a child lost. I'm looking for my relative. And the first, if this has position relative, then hey, I found my relative. I'm good. If this isn't position relative, then hey, I'm going to go to the body. And there you go. All right. So I'm going to set set its parent to relative. It found its parent. It's good. All right. And so now whenever I mess around with the positioning, it's based on this. It's based on, on the position of container four. If I move container four, then also this one that's floating moves with it because it's related to it. Relations. All right. So that's that one. All right. Let's do one more. And I'll just we'll do one more for fixed. And then I'll get into sticky. And I need to start a whole new um, structure for that. But here we go. So fixed. So what happens if I do position fixed? So let me rename this to fixed. Set to fixed. And look at this. It says body uh, re relative to body. Even though this one has position relative, this is fixed to the body. And so let me set it to zero, zero. And so this is fixed to the body, meaning it never leaves its spot. So this is good for things like, um, you know, things like social buttons or something like that. But please, please do not use this for any bad user experiences, like placing an ad or something. This is good for uh, things like, you know, uh, modal, uh, menu modals. Like you click on something and the modal appears and it comes up on the whole page, stuff like that. But this is what fixed is. It's very simple. All right, it's fixed to the body and it has nothing to do, it, it will never just lock on to the parent item or the parent element that it's inside of. So you can even just take it out, take it out of its parent and it'll do the same thing. And again, if you want this to be on top of everything else, you set the Z index to something high and there you go. All right, last one, position sticky. Let me delete all of this stuff. And let me, let's put in a container and move that away. Let's put in a grid with two columns, one row, done. And we're going to put a heading here. Actually, no, sorry. We're going to put a div block. And in that div block, we're going to put one paragraph and a heading. And then on this side, we're going to put another div block. And inside of that div block, I'm going to put a couple of rich text elements. Okay. All right. So uh, last thing, I'm going to make the margin bottom something ridiculous, like 200 VH. So that way I can scroll past it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make this side sticky while the rest of the content scrolls. Okay, so this side, I'm going to give this a class name of sticky and set it to position sticky. And what sticky does is when I get to the top, which is zero. So when I get to the top, when this gets to the very top of the browser, I want it to stick. What it actually does is it's setting it to position fixed. It's a special thing. So it 
does position fix, and then once it gets beyond the bottom, well, once it gets to the bottom of the parent element, which is this grid, once it gets to the bottom of it, then it unsticks, all right? So as you can see, it's not working yet because just like position absolute, it needs a relative. So right now it's uh, relative to the body and it, it won't do that, okay? Its parent needs to be relative. So I can go to this grid and set the position to relative. And when I scroll down, it doesn't work. Oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> it says relative to grid. Let's double check everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is good. This is nice. What? You're supposed to work. Oh, <laughs> last thing. Um, notice how this grid right here, the height of this uh, column is the same height of this, of this column. Okay, the reason why is because I have the grid stretched. So I need to align it to the top. Okay, now look at the height of this column. See, it stops right here. So now it works. There you go. All right, so let me recap that. What I did was I have two columns in a grid. I set it to position relative. I set the first column to sticky and a top of zero. And also on the grid, I make sure that I line everything to the top and there we go. And that's how you do sticky. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you may have some questions. Uh, and if you do, I will do my best to answer them and m explain further uh, what each position really means. You can look this up on Google or Webflow University, but I like to teach in my own way. And uh, hopefully it gives you a better understanding. In the end, just click things and experiment. That's how we all learn. Well, that's how I've learned web design. I've been self-taught um, for all my life. And all I do is just click around and pretend I know what I'm doing. But all it is is just Googling and clicking, Googling and clicking. So uh, yeah, ask your questions. I'll answer them and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.